What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie. Today, I got another Lamy 2000 fountain pen. Or did I? <laughs> uh, no, I did not actually get another Lamy 2000, although it certainly looks like it. This is actually the Jinhao 80 fountain pen. These three are actually the Lamy 2000 fountain pen. But clearly, this is Jin Hao's version of their Lamy. Um, for those of you who have been following along for a while, you know that I do actually enjoy some Jin Hao pens, uh, especially this one right here. This one is the Jin Hao X159. Uh, I've done a full review of this one. Um, if you check out the most important fountain pen you will ever use or buy a uh, video that I did uh, in early December. Uh, it's quite popular. A lot of people really liked that. Um, this is sort of their version of like a Mont Blanc 149. So I thought I would do it again, but with a Jin Hao uh, that is like the Lamy 2000. Now it's a little bit difficult to tell on the camera, but this clip is actually gold colored, uh, not silver like the original Lamy. Side by side, you can tell, but by itself, it's a little bit difficult sometimes. Uh, but as you can see, they are spitting images. <laughs> um, to the naked eye, up close and personal, you can see a difference. Uh, it is not a 100% foolproof uh, knockoff. Um, you can get the um, Jinhao 80 with silver trim. Uh, the reason why I got gold trim uh, was because the silver trim option only came on Amazon with two pens uh, and I didn't want two pens because it doubled the price and I thought that that was silly so I didn't do it um, but even the base is the same the body is the same uh, you know visually speaking they've even got the little grains here although it's not quite the same feel but to be fair, it's not that far off. This is a little softer. The actual Macrolon is a little bit softer, a little bit smoother, um, a little bit more pleasant. Uh, whereas the Jin Hao, you can certainly tell is, is plastic. Uh, it's a little bit harsher, uh, a little harder. And the cap is almost identical. It's a little bit thinner uh, at the bottom, but all of the like aesthetics are basically the same. The biggest difference comes when you uncap. Then you can 100,000% <laughs> tell the difference uh, clearly. So you can fool someone with it capped, you can't fool someone with it uncapped. Uh, the Lamy 2000 is a piston fill, the Jin Hao 80 is not, it is a cartridge converter. Uh, so that is pretty much where the uh, likenesses stop. Um, because if you unscrew the barrel, it is a cartridge converter pen. Uh, it does come with a standard international, or at least mine did on Amazon. Uh, got a gold trim here, which I don't know why. Potentially that is so the snap cap can sit. Whereas the Lamy 2000 doesn't have that. It's just got these little tiny grips that hang on to the inside of the cap. This does not have that. Uh, the grip section does taper and has a tiny little ridge here where you can kind of see it where it stops. But other than that, fits pretty nicely. It's exceptionally light, lighter than the Lamy 2000. Uh, certainly does post and post very well and comfortably. So that is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, there's not a whole lot to the look of the pen itself. It, like I said, it looks like a Lamy 2000 until you uncap it. <laughs> uh, but I will say it does not write like a Lamy 2000. As you can see here, this is a very common thing that I'm struggling with these days. It was writing five seconds ago, but I've had it uncapped and it did not want to. It gave me some hard starts. Uh, the quick mm. 
I'm not sure if you can hear it. Let me move this closer to the... I hope you could hear that. It is a very, very tactile feeling nib. There's virtually no give. You really have to press it. And ordinarily when I do writing samples for you guys, uh, oh yeah, the nib. Just a basic Jin Hao nib. It actually kind of looks like a Lamy 2000. Or, my goodness, <laughs> a Lamy Safari and or All Star, which is quite comical in my opinion. Anyways, uh, I don't like to tune the nib before I do any of these reviews, but for this one, I had to. It was, the, the tines were so tight together, so horribly tight together, that it barely wrote at all. Um, and then it, it was just absolutely disgusting of a writer, like foul. Um, it was incredibly scratchy, incredibly dry to the point where, like I said, it barely wrote at all. The tines were aligned, but they were super, super scratchy. So I have modified this to be much more wet now. Um, even though it's still not considered my wetness, but for the average person, I would say it is, um, and it it is no longer scratchy, but it certainly feels like a sharpened pencil. This is what I would guess a fine nib. Uh, it didn't specify, but I would guess that it is a fine. Uh, reverse writing does work, but it doesn't really change anything, and it just makes the it even scratchier. To be fair, uh, oh sorry, the ink is. Robert Oster, Oster, however you want to pronounce that. Bondi. Blue. Lovely ink. Um, so, would I recommend this pen? Nope. <laughs> no, I would not. Because the writing experience for this was absolutely disgusting. Whereas the writing experience for the Jinhao X159 was delightful. Uh, and it is delightful. In fact, I still use it to this day. Granted, I've only had it for like about two months now, um, but I still use it quite frequently. It's very, very, very nice. Uh, and this one is noted fine. And so is this one. Um, the X180, like it says fine on it, but when I purchased it, the description went back and forth between fine, medium. So I'm going to assume it's a fine, like I said, because it's notated and it writes like one, but that's why I put it in brackets. And as you saw, even just there, <laughs> it hard started again. So I would not recommend this. Um, I would recommend if you're going to pick up a Jin Hao, grab something like this. Uh, if you do pick up the Lamy, then like the Lamy knockoff, then just know <laughs> you could be in for some attunement. <laughs> Let's just say that. But like I said with the X159 version, if you want to try out this pen to see if you like kind of like the style before you purchase the Lamy 2000, go for it. But to be fair, I don't see the point. For this one, I raved about it, A, because like I said, the writing experience is dynamite. And to purchase a Mont Blanc 159, or 149 rather, sorry, you have to spend like, you know, in and around the thousand dollar mark, uh, sometimes below if it's a used pen, sometimes above, depending on what it is. Whereas like the, the Lamy 2000, when you get like the regular black Macrolon version, not the two special editions, it's really... Uh, not that bad of a price. It's an affordable price. So to be fair, I don't really see the point of buying the knockoff rather than just the regular version uh, because the writing experience, the regular version is dynamite. I do have a review in my channel if you want to watch that. Uh, you get a piston fill with it. You get a gold nib that's super smooth, super wet. Um, some people have some hard start issues. I never have. Uh, clearly, I own three of them. <laughs> and I'm, I've never had a problem with it. So Ultimately, no, I do not recommend this fountain pen, but ultimately it is your choice. <laughs> uh, let me know in the comment section down below if you have ever watched 
another review of it where somebody loved it or if you've owned it yourself uh, and you really like it uh, let me know down below but until then thank you for watching hit that subscribe if you like this video hit the like button to let me know if you liked it and you want to see more every monday and friday and the occasional tuesday um, hit the description if you want to see the link to my patreon account and help support me and what I do here. But as always, if you're still watching this far in, you are the reason I make these videos, and I thank you very much. Bye.